Dear friends, once I was in a discussion with some friends, and the lady said, Father, I don't think that we should baptize children. I think when they grow old, when they attain the age of reason, they should decide for themselves if they want to be baptized. And I said, nice idea, that's insightful, with a degree of sarcasm in that. So I asked her, you're married, right? And you have children? She said, yes. And are your children going to school? She said, yes. And I said, in my opinion, I think you should not have these kids go to school. Wait until they grow up. Let them decide for themselves if they want to go to school. And she said, ah, Father, that will be unfair to them. I said, oh, it will be unfair to educate them, not to educate them, but it will be fair for you not to have the kids baptized. Dear friends, it is what you have that you can share. If you don't have it, you can share it. If you have the faith, and it is very, very precious, and is a treasure to you, you will lovingly and willingly want to share it. You can give what you do not have. In our readings of today, it's all about making choices. And when we make these choices, they go with consequences. In the first reading of today, Joshua telling the people of Israel, once Moses died, the baton of leadership was handed over to Joshua. And as soon as the people of Israel settled in Canaan, the promised land, they all took their portion of the land, the tribes of Israel. And before going about their daily affairs, he called them. And he, he threw the question to them. Choose today whom you would serve. As for me and my own household, who will serve the Lord. And they all reaffirmed their faith. But we know in history, before they got to the promised land, they served the gods in Egypt. And even while they were in the wilderness, they still served other gods. After Joshua died, they served other gods. But in today's reading, basically Joshua summoned the people and asked them, being the leader, he told them, choose today whom you want to serve, the one true God or the gods that your forefathers served. Likewise, those as well who always make choices. In our readings of today, the summary of it, the first reading, is the reaffirmation of our faith in God. The second reading is how to live that faith within the domestic church, which is the family. And the gospel reading talks about how we need to sustain our faith through, in and through the embodied Eucharist, Jesus Christ. In our second reading, I guess when, when that reading was going on, what was going on in your mind? There have been a lot of people in different quarters who have said that we should take out this second reading out of the lectionary. But they missed the mark. They missed the point. There is a background to this second reading. In Greco-Roman world of Jesus' time, they have their law codes that people abide by. And when St. Paul was writing the letter to the Colossians and writing to the Ephesians, he took this Greco-Roman code, which was a way of ordering the society, he took part of that and harmonized them into Christian teaching, but it brought a different dimension to it. It was the Christ element brought to it. Today we are reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians in chapter 5. In chapter 6, from verse 1 to 4, it talks about the relationship of parents and children. And from verse 6 to 9, it talks about the relationship between slaves and their masters. That was the cultural assumption during the time of Paul. And it says something. In chapter 5, it said that husbands and wives should be subordinate to each other. That was the very first sentence. It talks about mutual subordination and how they need to imitate Christ. In chapter 6, 
the relationship between parents and children, it says that parents should not drive their children to folly or envy. They should teach their children the way of the Lord. And in the relationship between slaves and master, he reminded every master that you have another master in heaven. And that is the background to all of this. But people often focus about, focus on, oh, wives, be subordinate to your husband. The very first sentence there says, be subordinate to one another out of reverence to Christ. And it says, husbands, love your wife in the manner in which Jesus loved the church. And what was the manner in which Jesus loved the church? Basically, he died for the church. Literally, he's saying, everyone who occupies the, the place of leadership, you're like a servant. And what brings this home? In Luke chapter 25, 22, verse 25 to 26, you remember when Jesus was addressing his disciples, he says, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over everyone. Is referring to this law and this code. It says, the king of the Gentiles, they lord it over them. And those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest and the leader as the one who serves. The leader as the one who serves. That is the fine tuning that Jesus brings into this Gentile code. It is not about lording it over. Anyone who is a leader, you occupy the place of service. Literally, you are like a servant. And Jesus did not just talk the talk, he walked the walk. In our gospel reading of today, we have been reading this particular gospel for the past four or five weeks. Today is the 21st week. We started from the 17th week. Is the bread of life discourse. Last week, being assumption, we didn't take that particular reading. But it says that except we eat the flesh of the Son of Man, of Jesus Christ, we will not have life in us. And in today's reading, they said, it is very hard. We can't accept this teaching. Some left him. Some stayed. Dear friends, are there still people who are still wondering if we are going to change the teaching of the church or the teachings of Jesus Christ? Even as far back as the time of Jesus, not everyone accepted his teaching. Not everyone. And when he turned to his disciples, asking them again, what are you waiting for? Are you not going to go as well? And Simon Peter opened up to say, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. That is another decision making there. To whom shall we go? You have the message of eternal life. Dear friends, the question posed by Jesus and the question posed by Joshua is posed to you and I as well. Whom really do we serve? The one God or the contemporary gods? The gods of consumerism, the gods of materialism, the goals of relativism, the goals of what we see in contemporary society that says nothing is absolute. My opinion, my truth. And so in our readings of today, we are asked to rededicate ourselves, to recommit ourselves to the gospel of Christ. And the first reading is the reaffirmation of our faith. And the second reading is how we need to live this faith within our Christian family, which is the domestic church. And in the gospel reading of today, it talks more about how we need to sustain our faith in and through Jesus Christ, who is the body of Christ. Amidst all of the confusions in our world, every day, every week, Jesus comes to us. He comes to us in the Eucharist. He allows himself to be touched in the Eucharist. Today again, he will allow us to touch him, not just to touch him, to taste him. And we can say as well, like the psalmist, taste and see, truly, the Lord is good. Dear friends, our readings today invite us to rededicate ourselves 
to recommit ourselves to our Lord Jesus Christ. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Have you decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back.